If you look at Trump without sound, it, it really is a, a different administration than the one we're taught to think it is. If you got to take out all the noise. And a lot of that noise, obviously, is coming from the media. Uh, you know, some of the noise comes from Donald Trump himself. I mean, sometimes you got to ignore what Donald Trump is saying. But th before we get to that, let's think about the stuff that the media actually says. I mean, I play it here every day, right? I play him saying, oh, he's a Nazi. He's a fascist. He's de got dementia now. This is the big one. He's For a while, he was crazy. Now it's, he's got dementia. Uh, he was a Russian spy. He was a Russian asset for a while. Uh, all this crazy stuff that they keep saying. And this is not just coming, it's not just coming from like dopes you know, like Donnie Deutsch, who's the one who's always like spouting this stuff. It's it's from, you know, it's from responsible uh, news sources, or once responsible news sources, the New York Times, a former newspaper. They were involved in the, uh, oh, Donald Trump is inspiring shooters, the shooters in El Paso. They were just uh, leaning on every way, waiting for every word that Donald Trump spoke, that that's why they became what they became. The fact that that El Paso shooter was also an eco-nut that has nothing to do with the eco nuts telling us the world is coming to an end every minute. And the thing about this is, I always think about this. I, I think about this a lot, you know. I come here and you know that I'm trying to tell you what I see. I'm trying to tell you what I see and the problems with seeing things and, and how I, you know, when I'm not sure what reality is. And I'm actually trying to do that. If I came in here and tried to deceive you, I do not know how I would live with, live with myself. I don't know how you could come in and sit in front of a camera and sit with a microphone and try and deceive the people who are watching you. But I know these people are deceiving you. And I know at some level, at some level, it's conscious. I mean, the imagination is a powerful thing and maybe they live in their imagination. But the other day, Tom Hartman, now Tom Hartman, you may not know he was on, he may still be on RT, the Russian propaganda machine. And if you want, years ago, I was promoting a book and, you know, they send you out to these places and I didn't really know what RT was at the time, but they said it's, you know, connected with Russia. I said, fine, fine. I'm promoting a book. So I went in and I, Tom Hartman interviewed me and you can go on and find it. It's, it's pretty funny interview. I'd never liked to, I never liked these things on YouTube when they say, you know, Ben Shapiro or Andrew Clevin, Michael Knowles destroy somebody. But I, I thought I made him look pretty bad just because once I realized what the show, I, I was sitting in the green room watching this left wing propaganda coming out of this place. And by the time I walked in, I just that these guys are lunatics. And so I just said to him, look, Tom, I think you're a lunatic. And uh, it was it was pretty funny. There were, he was You could just see on his face that no one had talked to him like that. And it really took him uh, off guard. So I, I, as, a, as a thinker, as a guy who's making comments, I don't have a lot of respect for what is coming out of Tom Hartman's mouth. So he tweets yesterday. Uh, and I should add that he wrote a book. He, he writes a lot of books. He's fairly popular among the left. He wrote a book about the Second Amendment and how evil it is and how bad the Second Amendment is and how we shouldn't have guns, right? Because, you know, if there was one thing a Russian propagandist knows is that American people shouldn't have guns because he saw Red Dawn and he doesn't want that going on. So, so T Tom Hartman yesterday, he, uh, he puts out a tweet. He says, mark my words. Donald Trump is waiting patiently and encouraging his very own version of the Reichstag fire to flip U.S. democracy autocratic. OK, so the Reichstag fire, I'm sure, you know, Adolf Hitler, there, there was some crazy communist lit a fire in the Reichstag, the government building in Berlin. And Hitler and the Nazis played that up uh, to seize emergency powers, which, of course, they never let go of. They became dictators saying we must protect the, the polity from these this evil uh, communist conspiracy. So he's saying that Donald Trump is just waiting to stage a Reichstag fire so he can seize emergency powers and become Adolf Hitler. And so I tweeted back at him. I said, well, Tom, then you must want us to have guns, right? Because you wouldn't want us not to be able to defend ourselves against Hitler. If Hitler is the president, the people need guns. I mean, this is one of the problems. Uh, Hitler came and confiscated the Jews' guns. You know, he knew where all the guns were because they had gun registration. So he came and got all the guns and the people couldn't defend themselves. I mean, when they had an uprising, finally had a, an uprising uh, in the Warsaw Ghetto, one of the hardest things to do was to acquire weapons. That was why it was so tough for the Jews to fight back when they came to kill him. So I tweeted back and I said, well, if he's Hitler, obviously you want us to have guns. Except obviously he doesn't because he wrote this book. So he's just a gas bag. He's just a gas bag. He's just a guy with gas emanating out of his mouth because it, he obviously doesn't believe this guy is Hitler because if he did, he would want us to have guns. He would want to have a gun. So they don't actually believe what they're saying. Right. So we have all. But but still, still, they create this noise. They create this world in which we're constantly in danger. 